Hey guys, welcome to a new video. I'm Stephanie West. I'm an LPC here in the state of Michigan. Today I want to talk about just how complex change can actually be and why it's often not, you know, we just wake up in the morning, commit to a new plan, pull the trigger, and we're good to go. There's usually many different layers to change and there's really kind of multifaceted things going on that we want to consider as it relates to change. Now I'm going to talk today kind of through the lens of nutrition, but this really does apply to many other pieces of habit formation, habit linking, and just the change process in general. And so as I'm finishing up my nutrition course, one of the words that they use quite often is taking a biopsychosocial uh, point of view. And what that means is with each client that we navigate and that we work with, there's going to be different elements in their story that we want to consider. And if we don't consider them, there's going to be probably barriers to change happening. So the first piece of the word here is bio. So it's talking about the biology. So just the genetic makeup of someone. Uh, one of my favorite expressions from our abnormal psych class that I was teaching is uh, genetics load the gun, environment pulls the trigger. That's very, very common that we might have a predisposition to something and then something in our environment can actually like set it off. And so understanding biology as kind of a basic starting point for change is actually quite important because we all have different genetic makeups. We all have potential predispositions. And that is something we want to consider as it relates to change. The second piece of the word here is psycho or psychology, talking about our lenses, our points of views, our thoughts, our kind of behaviors, our emotions. It's all part and parcel of what we individually experience in the change process. So something that works for me might not just organically work for, for, for someone else because I have a different psychology, I have a different temperament, I have a different background, I have different lenses that I use, different perspectives, different motives. There's a whole host of things going on. So right now we kind of have the way my, my body and my, um, my composition is made up, then we have kind of the psychology of things. And then this last piece is so important. There's a social element to all change. If we're going to do something differently, often there's environmental management and social management that has to go on. If I am engaging in behaviors that are not for my good, but I'm engaging in them in community and I wanna stop, I'm probably going to have to rethink my community. If I have really strict adherence to goals for a, a little bit of time here, whether it's financial goals, whether it's physical goals, and there's certain um, community contacts where I'm going to be less able to be strict about my goals, I might have to forego the social piece at least for a short season. There's going to be different cultural norms that are part of my kind of social dynamic that if I'm going to make changes, I might push up against the system. And there's a saying that says, if you push against the system, the system pushes back because there will be social shifts that happen. And sometimes those can be met with resistance, your own personal resistance. It can be kind of part of your, your core support group is resisting it. There's so many things to consider. So as you come to kind of making decisions about changing, whether it's you know behaviors, whether it's thought patterns, patterns, whether it's certain um, rituals, whatever it is, there's going to be many elements to kind of peruse through. Again, this one's talking all about biopsychosocial. There are other pieces to consider that aren't captured in this word, but it is something to demonstrate just how multifaceted change and health and, and wellness actually is, which is why it's really good to entrust someone to walk with you. So coming to see someone like a therapist where we can look at what are the barriers in each of these situations? What are the kind of the customs and traditions? What do we wanna replace them with? There's a lot of things to consider. If you've tried to make changes and it hasn't been successful, I would wonder, do you have kind of uh, barriers in some of these places that haven't been explored? And maybe it would pay off to uh, come talk to someone about them.